What's going on Vancouver Canucks fans and welcome back to our franchise mode. So in the last episode, we won the lottery. Now we didn't get first overall pick, but we got a pretty damn good consolation prize with Andrei Sveshnikov. He is a 77 medium elite sniper, all right? When I say sniper, I mean sniper. This guy's gonna score a lot of goals for our team in the future. Now there was some talk in the comments and it was a pretty exciting talk actually about the future of this team because you got people like, where is he? First off, you got Shvechnikov. Guy's an absolute beast. He's gonna grow for us. He's gonna be a monster. Second overall pick. You got Shvechnikov. You got Peterson, who's gonna be a beast as well. I've seen him get to like 90 overall. And then we got Brock Besser. So that line of the future is just going to be insane for us. Plus we have some really good people in the system as well, like Jonathan DeLeon. Uh, we have um, we have Cole Lind as well. I mean, our prospect pool is looking really nice right now, and I think with the addition of Shvechnikov, that just makes it that much better. Obviously, it sucks not to get Rasmus Dahlin. He is the number one fish, and he is going to LA, um, so that's going to be a nasty tandem, and we're definitely going to have to uh, definitely going to have to deal with Drew Doughty and uh, and Rasmus Dahlin for the next 10, 15 years. Now, before we get into the re-sign stage, talk about the Sedins, talk about if Shvechnikov is going to end up playing in the NHL or not, we got to go over a comment here, and it is from II Taser 12 He says, did anyone catch San Jose stealing a low franchise goalie 26th overall? I did not see that. Um, I had to go back in the video, and you guys are right. So let's see what this guy's looking like here. Where is he? Goalies. Uh, Zaver? Z Sam Zaver? 75 overall low franchise. Oh wow, he's an American goalie, Zaver. Sam Zaver, 18 years old, 75 overall, low franchise. Wow, I mean, in uh, in a uh, system like the San Jose Sharks who don't have a goaltending prospect, I mean, that's really going to help them out. Who is their goalie? I mean, Martin Jones is good, and he's going to be good for a few years, but Aaron Dell's not that great, and they really don't have anybody else in the system. So having a low franchise, I'm actually interested to see how he's going to grow. So that is quite the steal. Uh, I didn't even realize that they, um, that they, that, that they got him. That's ridiculous. But uh, Thatcher Demko talking about our goaltending prospect he's listed as a backup goalie so he's got to be our backup goalie you're gonna say goodbye to Anders Nilsson I'm gonna go ahead and end up trading him in the offseason so he's gonna be gone and then we're gonna roll with uh, probably Bachman and Di Pietro in the AHL and I'll probably have to re-sign Richard Bachman which we'll do right now why not uh, 900,000 that's good for me there you go so we got our goalies all ready to go for next year except we got to trade Anders Nilsson which could be very easy to do. Now, the stuff that we really got to talk about, the stuff that you guys have been talking about in the comments, and that is the Sedins. Some people say, use the Sedins as trade bait. This guy also says, draft 9 out of 10. Thank you, sir. Nathan, you are a gentleman. Uh, this guy says, don't resign the Twins. And then you got people like this. Think, I think you should keep the Twins. They've been here their whole career. They're a part of Vancouver's identity. I agree with that as well. So I see every single side here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-sign the Twins, all right? I'm not going to let them walk for nothing. There's absolutely no point to let two players who are probably going to hit 40 points this year each. That's, you know, maybe not on the low scale. That's probably what they're going to hit around 30 to 40, maybe 50 points. So why would I let those players walk? Don't re-sign the Twins. There's no point for me not to re-sign the Twins. That's going to have pretty much our third line be no one. I don't want to have Derek Dorsett playing on our third line. So I am going to re-sign Henrik and Daniel. Now, Henrik wants two years at 3.1. Now, I'm going to give him 3.5. Five for the one year. Now you're saying, why are you giving him more than he's asking for? This now, year in franchise, the contracts do not work the same. You could do some some multiplying and dividing, and that would be what they would get. You can't do that anymore. So they won't re-sign. If I was to give him exactly what he wanted, he'll probably say no. I don't want to give him a two-year deal, so the one year is all I really want. So I think 3.5 at one year is fair for Henrik Sedin. Now I see what Daniel Sedin wants. He wants 3.3 at one year. So I'm going to give them both $3.5 million 
our contracts for one year. If they sign, awesome. If not, I'll have to figure something out. So um, those players are coming back for sure. I have a plan. I have a plan for next year. Um, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to execute it, but I have a plan. So Sven Berchi wants 4.5 for two years. That's okay. Uh, I feel like 4.5 is a good, a pretty good contract. There you go. Marcus Granlund, will we uh, see him grow? If I see him at 83, 84 overall, that's going to be awesome. He's definitely going to be our second line center then. Uh, I'm going to give you 4 million bucks uh, for three years. That seems like a pretty good deal. I like that. You know, it's not a, not a super crazy deal, but if he's 84 overall, I mean, that's a pretty good bang for your buck. Uh, Bermistrov, that's a player that we have to sign as well. So he wants... 2.3. I'll give him exactly what he wants for two years. Now, Bermistrov is a guy who I could trade. Um, he's potential trade bait because I have an idea of how I want the team to look. Um, Nikolai Goldobin, we're going to give a contract to. 2.8 for two years. How about how about 2.6 because you haven't proven yourself yet. But he is probably going to get top six minutes. He's probably going to be my second line right winger. Goldobin's going to be good for us. I really hope he does grow. Uh, Matt Benning, I will give a contract to. How does 1.7 for two years sound? A nice depth player there, 78 overall. Actually played pretty well for us. Uh, Ryan White, we're not going to bother giving a contract to. We're going to release him. Uh, Alex Biega, we will re-sign. I think he wants cheap, yeah. I'll give you uh, I'll give you uh, 9.75. There you go. Just for the AHL and if we got to worry about injuries, all that stuff. Reed Boucher, we're going to qualify the restricted free agents. There you go. You're good in Utica. Uh, Jake Vertanen, we will give a contract to. There's still hope for young Jake. I promise you there is still hope. Uh, Anton Rodin gonna go in the AHL. Michael Chaput. Yeah, you know what? Why not? We'll just stock up our AHL team. They were so good last year. Uh, why not? Let's make them good once again. Jason Megna. Um, I'm gonna say no to Jason Megna because that's gonna be where Pedersen's gonna play this year. So Jason Megna is gone. Samuel Moran. He wants a one. He wants a one-way deal. At 74 overall, really? You want a one-way deal? Well, you know what? I'm going to start him in the AHL anyways, so 1.1 is not bad. I'm going to start him in the AHL. He'll probably decline a two-way deal. Uh, let's see, though, just for fun. Let's see, a one-way deal. Going to hang out in the AHL. If not, I'll give him exactly what he wants, and I just won't call him up because I don't have to worry about, about waivers and all that crap. Andre Padan will qualify. Uh, who else we got? Who else is coming back? Uh, Bill Sweat's going to, we're going to say no. Griffin Milano, we're going to give a contract too. All these guys are good in the AHL. I'm going to go ahead and sign up everybody else and I'll get back to you guys in a second so I don't bore you to death. Alright, here we go. Let's see who re-signed. Let's see who rejected. I don't know if both the twins are going to re-sign, but uh, Matt Benning says yes. Samuel Moran said yes on a two-way deal. That's nice. Thank you very much, sir. Anton Rodin said yes. Bermistrov said no. Okay, I've decided to test the free agent market. Some more money could change my mind. Alright. Michael Chapu, yes. Daniel Sidney Dean said no, and Hendrix Dean said yes. So I can't just get one of them and not the other. So I'm gonna have to beef up a little bit more money. Uh, you saw there, Alex Biega also said no, and a few other AHL guys, which is all good. Thank you very much. Now you probably noticed that I completely skipped over Patrick Weirkosh, and that's because he wants 2.8 for three years at a 79 overall top six. Now I think Weirkosh is okay, but I think I'm gonna test the free agent market here because we have so much money in free agency as it is we have how much uh cap space we have 22 million and it's good, probably going to be about 19 or 18 million once uh, henrik sedin signs so or sorry once daniel sedin signs damn twins never know which is which but Patrick Weirkosh, I'm going to release you. Um, he was decent for us, but I don't think he has a future here. I really don't think it's going to make much of a difference if we have Patrick Weirkosh or not, because I think we're going to be a little bit of a player in free agency. So Alex Bermistroff, what do I got to offer you here? Uh, 2.7? 2.7 for two years? I mean, he was decent for us. I don't think he's worth over 3 million. Plus, he is 26 years old. He had 28 points in 64 games, lit it up in the AHL. Um, but... I I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Let's see if he re 
signs. If not, I may offer him a little bit more money, but I really don't feel comfortable going over $3 million when I think we could get some money in free agency for quite a bit better. Uh, so Bermistrov said no, wow. And Daniel Sedin said yes. So I had to give Daniel Sedin 3.8, um, and I got a few other players as well. So I had to give Daniel a little bit more than Henrik. Don't tell Henrik. Don't tell him. Uh, I don't want him to feel bad, but uh, I had to give him a little bit more so he would eventually sign with us. So, I mean, I'll go 2.8 on you. Um, that's a lot. That's more than I wanted to go. Uh, 2.8, there you go, two years. If not, we'll have to be players in free agency, um, but I think we can get a player better than Burmistrov for a little bit less. Now, okay, he did sign, all right, great. So, there's no guarantee that Burmistrov is going to be on our team next year because, again, I have some plans. I have some uh, have some ideas with this team and uh, the idea is all these guys blah blah, blah. yeah you're all good okay so Shvechnikov does he play in the NHL next year I don't know that's a big question he's 77 overall all right he is medium elite he could really benefit from playing on a sick team down in Utica not saying it's gonna be the same team it was last year because there's gonna be no there's gonna be no uh, Thatcher Demko but does it worth it for him to play on a fringe team and, you know, be okay? Or he could go play on a really good team and have a phenomenal year and even more improve himself. Because he is 77 overall. Uh, he's NHL ready. He is. He's listed as what? He's listed as a... I think he's a, a depth forward or an AHL first liner or something like that. I um, actually want to see what his trade value is. Probably pretty high. Let's see here how post trade. But um, I just don't want to rush him. I don't want to rush him, and I also don't want to uh, I don't want to ruin him by playing him too. Look at oh wow! Look at Bjorkstrand's trade value. Holy crap. Okay, I have a question here. He's a medium elite 17 years old, all right? He's still really young, but he's 52 overall, and he is only 17 years old. He was a first-round pick. He was our 29th pick. He was the pick we, that we got from Edmonton. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, that's really good trade value for someone like that. So does that mean he's going to grow? Um, like how long until he's going to be ready to play in the AHL? Is it going to be till he's 20? Because he's only 17, right? But 52 overall, that seems... Uh, that seems pretty low. I never really dealt with a player like that. If you ever dealt with a player like that, let me know. But uh, look at our prospects right now. Shvechnikov, Ulevi, Bjorkstrand, Elias Peterson, Brock Besser, Jonathan Deline. We are uh, we're looking real good right now. Plus, we've got to talk about Adam Gaudet as well. So I have our team looking like this, all right? As of right now, all right? We got the centers. The, the centers are looking like this. We got Horvat, Granlin, Sedin, and Gagne. Now, I think I'm going to trade Gagne or play him on the wing and then play Adam Gaudet in the NHL this year because he is listed as a fourth line forward, 22 years old, had a great year last year in Utica, almost a point per game, 28 goals, 47 helpers. He has to play in the NHL this year. I think he's a must play. So either Gagne goes to the wing or Gaudet goes to the wing or we trade Gagne and we have other players play on Gaudet's wing. Either way, Gaudet is playing in the NHL. Left wingers, we have Berchi, Sedin, Burmistrov, all right? And that's either going to be Reed Boucher or Brandon Gauntz, probably leaning more towards Reed Boucher. Uh, or, I mean, both are pretty good options. Either way, one's going to play in Utica. And then on the right wing, we have uh, Besser and Goldobin. Now, it looks a bit weak because we have Dorset there as well. So I do kind of want Goldobin to play on our top six. I don't want Dorset to play on our third line, all right? So that's where Svechnikov comes in. We play Svechnikov on our on our third line, and then we have Goldobin and the Twins on our second line, or something like that. Or we could play Svechnikov with the Twins on our third line. We could really try that out. So I think regardless, I'm going to give him five games in the NHL, but I think we should have a backup plan. That backup plan has to happen right now. So say for example, let's actually go look what's in free agency right now, um, because we do have to make some sort of a trade. But I do need a defenseman. That's first things first. I want to check on a defenseman now let's see i want to go to ufa because i don't feel like uh getting rid of any picks ufa all right so a defenseman what do we see here we see jack johnson at 4.6 for two years uh 82 overall listed as a top four all right, Jack Johnson's pretty good. Uh, 17 points last year. You see, our defense doesn't have a big offensive guy. I want someone to put up some numbers like uh, Mike Green. He's an exact top four offensive defenseman. Okay. He's a little bit on the older side, 32 years old. It's not a permanent thing. He does want four years, though. 
Oh, okay, what do we do? I mean, we have the cap to do it, so why not? Let's give him a, sorry, he doesn't want a four-year deal. So, sorry, he wants a two-year deal, not a four-year deal. What I, I thought I saw a four, but maybe I was looking at Perron or Cam Atkinson. But anyways, he wants a two-year deal, all right? Now I'm comfortable with, how about a one-year deal at more than you're asking at $4.85 million. So that's $450,000 more than you're asking. Plus you're gonna get top pairing minutes with, uh, you're probably gonna play with Hutton. And then I'm gonna throw Tanev, sorry, no, you're gonna play with Tanev. I'm gonna have Tanev Green, Hutton Del Zotto. No, 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 hold on, I'm getting all confused here. We're gonna have Mike Green, Chris Tanev, Ben Hutton, Troy Stetcher, G uh, not Jim Benning, Matthew Benning, and uh, Del Zotto. That's going to be our top six. All right, so Mike Green, please sign with our team. Please, 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 please come to Vancouver. There you go. Thank God. Mike Green is here. This guy says no. Uh, he doesn't want to come. That's fine. Um, now we can work on a few different traits here. So all these guys are good. Tyler Bertuzzi's back, the nephew of Todd Bertuzzi. I had to bring him back. I had to do it. Ooh, Jordan Stahl. <laughs> uh, Jordan Stahl for a second and a third so you don't really need another center um, especially with a contract like that I appreciate the offer but that's a no thank you um, so what I'm gonna do here is now we have to make a decision are we comfortable with Burmistrov as our second line winger I don't think so. All right, so what I did is I edited up the trade block a little bit, so we should get some offers throughout the course of the off season. I'm gonna simulate all the way to the start of the uh, regular season, and I'm gonna stop and obviously show you guys the trade offers that I get. I would like to move Burmistrov and Anders Nielsen. I will do that. I will move Anders Nielsen by the end of this video. Burmistrov, I'm not sure yet. We'll see what the offers entail. I'll see you guys in a minute. I also signed some more players for our AHL team, like Jacob De La Rose, who's only 23, I think that's a pretty decent uh, potential player there. Medium top nine. I'll take it. Uh, this guy says no. So anyways, Andrew Ladd for... What are you talking about? Get out of here. Oh, look at this. Okay, I didn't think this would actually happen. Uh, okay, Derek Pouliot is only 24 years old, and he was asking for 1.2 for a one-way deal. Uh, and I didn't have the draft picks. Well, I did have the draft picks, but I didn't want to give up the draft picks to the Penguins. So I offered him max rookie contract on a two-way deal, and Pittsburgh said no, they didn't want to take him. He's a low top four. That's easy money. That is an easy player. Ooh, a third for Bramistrov. Ooh, I'd rather move Burmistrov plus for a player. Um, I'll come back to that, but okay, we got pretty much a free player. Sure, Derek Pouliot, I'll take it. What's his trade value like? His trade value isn't strong, but a low top four, 24 years old, why not? He's gonna help out our AHL team for sure. I didn't think that was gonna go through. That's awesome. So I'm having a look here at the Florida Panthers. They want to get rid of Kyle Turris. Now, a few things about Kyle Turris. Kyle Turris is a Vancouver-born boy. Uh, he would fit really nicely on our second line between Goldobin and Granlund. Um, we could play him on the wing or down the middle. He's 84 overall. He's, he is making six mil, but it's only for the next two years. And he puts up numbers. I mean, 50 points in back-to-back -back years. His highest was 64. Um, he's a really good player. Plus, he's a Vancouver-born player. So if I give them Anders Nielsen, who is nothing to us right now, we want to get rid of him. He's on 2.5 for one year. I give them Alex Bermistrov, who's a pretty good player, 28 points last year. And we throw in Cole Lind, who is a low top six, a second round pick for us uh, in 2017. So the trade value looks even. It may have to add a little bit more but they want to get rid of Turris so they get a roster player a prospect and a backup goalie so uh, let's see who their goalies even are does this even make sense for them who do they have in net uh, they have James Reimer and okay so, so they still have Luongo and Reimer I mean he could even battle for James Reimer for the backup position so maybe you'll have to add a pick uh, we'll see if this will go through I don't think this will uh, trade rejected yeah so obviously it wasn't sufficient but Cole Lind I think is a good start I think we're uh, I think we're getting somewhere here here. So let me see if we can make this go through. They want they want some people on our team, all right? They want Brisewaugh, who I wouldn't mind giving up. Uh, Brendan Gauntz, Reed Boucher. So what if I added a third and a fifth to this? That adds the trade value a little bit. It's kind of even. 
Uh, the third round pick is for 2020, so it's not for next year. Uh, if this trade doesn't go through, I'll try a fourth, and then I'll try another third. Uh, so will this go through for Kyle Turris? Trade accepted. There you go. I'm happy to accept this proposal on behalf of the Florida Panthers. We consider it a done deal. All right. I was not expecting to make that trade, but since we did get Kyle Turris, that pretty much solidifies our second line, which is huge. There you go. Kyle Turris. So we're going to go Turris, Granlin, Goldobin. Uh, oh, hold on here. Hold on. Sam, go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Trades. Trades are happening. So we're going to go uh, Granlund, uh, Turris, and then Goldobin, and then the Sedins and Sveshnikov, and then we'll worry about our fourth line in a, in a couple minutes here. But fourth line, uh, that had something to do with Sam Gagne. Who's this guy? He is a low top six left wing power forward. Uh, he's 19 years old. He looks pretty good. Um, pff, trade value is definitely in their favor here. Uh, Sam Gagne I actually want to hold on to uh, for right now. Um, or do I? And Matt Benning is a piece of our defensive core that we would have to replace right away just for another uh, for another winger prospect. He was what? He was a fourth round pick. I don't know anything about this guy. He looks decent, but that's two roster players for a project. No thanks. Holy, look at this trade. They want us to give up Ole Levy and Troy Stetcher for Philip Zadina and a second round pick. Oh man. Zadina was what, a sixth, a sixth overall pick? Oh man, they're already giving up on Zadina. Hey, what do you guys do in Toronto? Don't do that. LA wants to give us Tanner Pearson, a fifth and a sixth for their... How does this make this a good deal for you? Okay, so they want to give us Tanner Pearson, who's making three point... I wish I knew this before I got Kyle Turris. They want to give us Tanner Pearson, all right, who is upset. He's not happy right now. Look at him. He is 76 overall. He's not happy. That's going to jump up to 83, 84, maybe 82 on the low end. Um, okay, <laughs> I feel like we have to take the deal. A third and Derek Dorsett. We don't need that third. Um, Derek Dorsett is... I'd love to get rid of Derek Dorsett. I really would. Tanner Pearson is what? What did he get last year? He had 30. How am I not going to take this deal? Yeah, I got to give up a third, but it was it's a nothing third. We got that third for what? Was that the trade for Thomas Vanek? I mean, and I got a fifth and a sixth. Um, yeah, I, I don't see why we don't take that deal. If anything, we could just trade him. He's only 26 years old. He's going to jump back up. Although we already have the spot filled, I don't know why we... Am I just... Am I dumb? Like, am I stupid with this? Like, should I not take this? Is this like a trap? All right, so as you see here, I just spoke to my assistant GMs, and they said it was a no-brainer. So I think so as well. Thank you very much, LA. Uh, okay, interesting. Very interesting. See what he's looking like now. He should jump up. Uh, that's pretty much just a free player. Okay, interesting. Uh, LA has made some questionable moves with us, that's for sure. Where is he? He's jumped up to... Where is he? He's jumped up to an 81 overall. Um, yeah, sure. That's easy. That's very easy. Listed as a second liner? What? Okay, we'll have to get some comments going here in a sec. Let me get the year started, and uh, I'll see you guys in a second. All right, so here we are at the start of year number two. What a weird episode. All right, so let's see how the lines look right now. So, okay, look, Marcus Granlin did grow. I told you guys he would grow. So this is not what I want the lines to look like. I want to go something like, where is it here? I want to go you there. I want to go you on the first line right wing with Berchi, and then you there, and then you there. Uh, hold on. Berchi, Besser, Horvat, Goldobin, Granlin, Turris, Sedins, and Svechnikov, Gagne, Gauntz, and Reed Boucher. Now, that's not really um, what I want. I want to bring up, uh, I want to send down Reed Boucher and bring up Tanner Pearson, which seems great. Pearson's already up to an 82. Thank you very much. If not, we can just flip that guy. That's easy money. Easy. Easy money. Thank you very much. Uh, let me get these lines all prepared, and I'll see you guys in a second. 
All right, so here are the lines. Now it's a little bit crazy. I didn't expect to get Tanner Pearson. Now it kind of throws a wrench into the things because this team can compete. Look at us. We're not that bad on paper. Um, I think that having Pearson now really solidifies our team. I think that we could probably end up switching these two around. But now that Pearson's here, that kind of took Svechnikov's spot. Is it worth it for Svechnikov to play on a decent NHL team on the fourth line or play on a really good team in the AHL first line? I'm leaning more towards the AHL, but I'm going to talk to you guys about it in the comments before we start the year off. Adam Gaudet is going to be the fourth line center this year, no question. Uh, now, whether he actually has better faceoffs than Sam Gagne, so I'm going to keep it like that. Now, it's either Gauntz or Svechnikov here. It's up to you guys because our top nine is kind Kind of set. If you have any argument toward this, please let me know. But look at Granlund up to an 84. Told you guys this guy would grow. But I'm excited, man. This team just got crazy. <laughs> I didn't expect this at all. Uh, so we got Hutton and we're going to go. Sorry, no, we're going to go you right there. We're going to go Green, Tanev, Stetcher, Hutton, Benning, Delzato. And then in net, we're going to go with Markstrom and Demko. Now, Demko is going to be the number one dude. He's the big fish. He's the big fish coming up now uh, and then in the AHL we got uh, we got this we got Rodine Jake for 10 and we're gonna give all these guys first line minutes there you go we got Tyler Bertuzzi I want this guy to rip it up I want him to make the NHL squad one day that'd be awesome another Bertuzzi bloodline in the NHL we got Peterson here is probably gonna be NHL ready in two years Arbamov I don't know what this guy could be uh, our AHL team look at Derek Pouliot he jumped up to a 78 overall listed as a top six exactly same thing with Ole Levy. Do we bring both those guys up and play them where Delzato and Benning are playing? Do we play the young guys? I don't know. This is going to be a lot of questions for you guys. I'm going to talk it over with my assistant GMs. What a weird one. Like I wanted to end it and then all of a sudden we traded for tourists and then the LA Kings decided to just gift us Tanner Pearson. I don't know what the LA Kings are, are doing, giving us first round picks for Thomas Vanek and giving us Tanner Pearson for Derek Dorsett. I mean, now we're actually paying a middle six forward instead of overpaying for a fourth liner. It's only a $1.1 million difference between Derek Dorsett and Tanner Pearson. So I can't see how that's not a good deal. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. We got to figure out how we're going to work out our lines and you guys are going to be a big part of that. So thanks for watching. See you guys then.